Daily Worship Devotionals podcast, episode number seven, How to Be a Wise Guy, or What the Magi Can Teach Us About Worship. Well, hey there, friends. Welcome to Daily Worship Devotionals, a five-minute podcast where we study the Word of God, listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit, all within the framework of the Christian calendar. I'm Rob Still. I'm a worship leader here in Nashville, and the season we're currently looking at is Epiphany, studying the early life of Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about what the Magi can still teach us about worship. So let's go. Oh, Lord, how majestic. How majestic is your name in all the earth? Okay, what the Magi can still teach us about worship. So the story of the Magi in Matthew chapter 2 is the traditional text for the first Sunday in Epiphany. We're going to review it or read it real quick. And uh, I want you to notice um, the moments of Epiphany in the story. And by the way, I'm going to be reading for you my own special translation. Now, this is something I do uh, a lot of times where I will do a mashup between different translations. So you can go to BibleGateway.com and uh, see, man, they've got every translation in the universe there. So the one I'm going to be reading from is primarily a new version I found anyway called the Christian Standard Bible. And then I've uh, mixed in parts of the voice Uh, with an assist from the Amplified and the Message. So here we go, Matthew chapter 2. Wise men visit the king. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem. Now some other translations call the Magi scholars or seers or wise men, and they were educated people who specialized in astronomy, astrology, and the natural sciences. Okay, and the wise men were saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? When we were far away in the east, we saw his star, and we have followed its glisten and gleam all this way to worship him. Now, when King Herod heard this, he was deeply disturbed. Other translations say terrified and worried. And all of Jerusalem with him. And the whole city was about to have a panic attack. So Herod called all of the leading Jewish teachers, religious scholars, the chief priests, and head scribes, and he asked them where Hebrew tradition claimed the long-awaited anointed one would be born. Verse 5, in Bethlehem of Judea, they told him, because this is what was written by the prophet. And then they quote Micah 5, 2, and basically they say it's Bethlehem. I'm going to pick it up here at verse 7. Then Herod secretly summoned the wise men and pretending to be as devout as they were, he asked them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, Go and search carefully for the child. Hey, and when you find him, report back to me so that I too can go and worship him. Yeah, right. Verse 9. After hearing the king, they went on their way, and there it was, the star they had seen at its rising. It was a miracle, of course, and it overjoyed and enraptured the wise men. It led them until it came and stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warmed in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their own country by another route. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, so what the Magi can teach us about worship. First, the Magi were attentive, they were sensitive, and they were responsive. They were attentive to see God at work. They were sensitive to hear his voice and listen for interpretation and they were responsive to know what to do and to take action. Now, throughout this story, they experienced a series of epiphanies or revelations that led them to Jesus. So here's just a few. First, they may have known some of the Hebrew scriptures, such as the book of Daniel. Second, they were observing the heavens 
and the stars for revelation of that God was at work. Now, Psalm 19 says that the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands day after day. They pour forth speech night after night. They display knowledge. So they were tapping into some of this universal or general divine revelation of God in the heavenly places. Third, uh, they actually encountered Jesus in the presence of a person. And when they came upon Jesus in the flesh as a baby in his presence, man, that changed everything. Fourth, this is the epiphany, right? The Lord spoke to them in a dream of warning. Okay, so like the Magi, we can do the same thing. We can be attentive, sensitive, and responsive. When you seek him, you will find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. When you seek me in prayer and worship, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart and soul. Amen. Point two, the Magi were on a quest to worship. They were on a mission to find the king of the Jews. And by that, they knew they were talking about the promised Messiah. They understood that they were looking for the one who was to be the savior of the world. Now, these were spiritual guys, and they sought to find and worship the one who was truly worthy of their worship. And that is exactly what they did. They wanted to come and worship him because worship is in the heart of all people who are made in the image of God because all humans are created in God's image. I like to say it this way. Everybody worships all the time. All right. Now, like the Magi, if you are on a quest to seek and find the true God, you will find him. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. So, like the Magi, if you set your heart to worship him, you will achieve the desires of your heart. Okay, point three. The Magi gave their very best, the most valuable gifts they could offer. First, gold. Gold is still, man, one of the most precious resources in the world. By the way, you know the golden rule, right? He who has the gold rules. Okay. Gold represents giving honor to the king. Now, you can give the Lord the honor that a good king deserves. You can give him the gold of your heart. You can give him the treasure that he deserves. Secondly, frankincense. Frankincense is an incense, and incense was always part of the worship of the temple era. So you can offer a fragrant incense of your praise, prayers, and adoration. How? Well, in Ephesians 5, Paul says, Be imitators of God, therefore, as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant sacrificial offering to God third gift, myrrh. Myrrh is a rare ointment used for embalming. It represents sacrifice. How can we do that? We offer a sacrifice of praise, and we offer our lives as living sacrifices. Hebrews 13 verse 15 says, therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And Romans 12 1 says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Wow, okay, well that was a lot of content. So what can the Magi teach us about worship? First, we can be attentive, sensitive, and responsive. Secondly, we can be on a quest to worship him with all of our hearts. And third, we can give him our very best in worship. All right, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you would impart to us Uh, these lessons that we learn from the Magi, God, to be attentive to what you're doing in the world, to be sensitive to the sound of your voice, to be responsive to the leadership of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you would help us to seek you with all of our hearts and to worship you wholeheartedly. And Father, I pray that you would help us to give you our very best. I pray your blessing on my brothers and sisters in the name of of Jesus. Amen.
Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for joining me on dailyworshipdevotionals.com is the web address where you can find the transcript for this recording as well as free resources. And by the way, if you like this podcast, and thanks, by the way, I've been getting emails and stuff from people. I appreciate all the encouraging feedback. All right, so if you like the podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you happen to be listening to it on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube, where you can see my handsome mug. All right, so may God richly bless you. Until next time, the Lord be with you. This is the